You're looking at 6,000 hours a year out of a machine. That's a lot of throughput in a machine like this. So to be able to have that flexibility of high mix, low volume in parts, and be able to switch, and be able to run unattended at night, run unattended on the weekends, that's where the return on the investment, that's the value proposition of this machine. Tony, what are you doing? Oh, did we start already? <laughs> I, I was just showing my love for this machine and it's precision, Keith. I mean, when you talk about Exeron, you gotta immediately think precision, right? So I won't steal your thunder, but that's kind of why I was hugging it. Would you like to elaborate on my hug? Yeah, it's, this is an easy machine to love. So um, the Exeron machine, this is the MP9, it's a linear motor machine. So incredibly quick and fast, um, 60 meters a minute. Uh, diameter of part roughly 16 inches is what it can handle on a Trunnion design. Um, Exeron is, is built in Germany. Um, they've got a rich history and accuracy. Uh, accuracy and process is, is their backbone. Um, this machine's been designed for automation. So you know how hard it is today to get manpower. So what I love about Exeron is five axis, Trunnion. Uh, we're talking about a machine that we've got parts over here less than a micron. In fact, one part that shows 0.1 micron of, of a finish and a surface. <laughs> so uh, incredibly accurate machine, but there's a reason for it. Uh, they use a mineral base casting all through it. Machine weighs approximately 25,000 pounds cooled all the way through the casting, as well as the table, all the hot points, and even up into the head. 36,000 RPM step tech spindle, uh, HSK 50, uh, they offer it an HSK 40, and they'll go up, you know, RPMs into the 50,000 RPM range. Uh, Heidenhein 640 controller built into the machine. Uh, the machine is quick, it's fast. Uh, it's designed to cut lens work, Graphite, it's got a graphite package that's built in. I call it that it's off the NASCAR circuit. It's got louvers that will flip on up and it creates a pressure across the table with manifolds pulling all that graphite on out. So a combination machine. If a customer was doing graphite and wanted to switch and do some steel cutting and needed to, he could do that with this machine. Keith, you have given me so much ammo to go on here. Oh my gosh, I don't even know if I can highlight it for everyone. Yeah. Okay, linear guides, which instantly to me means precision and speed. Yeah, linear uh, motors, yep. The linear motors, yep. You mentioned automation, which is important. You mentioned the fact that I can go from graphite to steel if I need to, so not losing my torque and horsepower to go with speed. You mentioned up to 50,000 RPM, and did I hear you flip and say 0.1 micron? 0.1 micron, we have a component over here that's demonstrating that 0.1 micron. Point one. I mean, for the audience watching right now, do you know what a micron is? We're talking about splitting hairs. Splitting hairs to get to a micron. And Keith just told me point one micron. It seems crazy to me, but I did see it. And you're gonna see it too. Point one micron, that's incredible. Okay, so let's go in a little bit because I think it's somewhat unusual from the interviews I've done around the world to be able to take a machine and go, I can cut and the machine spindle is going to last. Anything as soft as graphite, although we do know graphite rips tools apart. Yeah. Something about that gritty material rip machines apart and, and tools apart, but this machine's built for it, so we're not going to yeah. really get into that part, but also cut steel within just maybe even a pallet change, right? And That's I correct. like that capability to switch from one to the other. If I'm going to run through the night, and maybe I don't have to clean out my machine in between graphite and steel, yeah. but I might have to. That's for another story on another day. Yeah. But the ability, the capability to do that, it's fascinating to yeah, me. 100%. So today, what's the one of the biggest needs for customers is, is throughput. And trying to find manpower is very difficult, so you've got to do more with less. When we can put an automated cell onto this machine and it's equipped on the backside to add automation, we're looking at 6,000 hours a year out of a machine. That's a lot of throughput in a machine like this. So to be able to have that flexibility of high mix, low volume in parts, and be able to switch, and be able to run unattended at night, run unattended on the weekends, that's where the return on the investment, that's the value proposition of this machine. And also to cut accurately and to give you flexibility of being, being able to cut graphite, being able to cut steel um, with accuracy. You know, Keith, to your point, and I think this is important for the audience to understand as well, to your point, 
There are machines who allow themselves, like this amazing machine, to run through the nights and weekends, as you mentioned. Yeah. We're all talking about the labor shortage. We're doing our best to create awareness to maybe reduce that, That's but right. currently, it's automation of some sort. It's reliability, it's precision, it's everything that goes into bringing a full circuit together to allow 100%. us to walk away and do more, right? Yes, that's right. But great. when we're doing that, we also need to make sure that when we walk away, we're getting quality parts off. And when we're walking away, we get that confidence and when we come back, we're getting what we need. And this machine does that. 100%. So one of the things that we wanted to show at the this expo here at the YCM Alliance, we have the DX224 with Open Mind as our partner, being able to cut that mold being able to insert that lens piece and to have that vacuum fit just shows you the tolerance and the accuracy of these two products coming together. So hand work, we're trying to eliminate hand work. We want to cut to zero and negative stock so that we can have a mold put together without any benching. It's all about lead time, throughput, and quality. And I think that's what we're trying to demonstrate with taking a component here and fitting it into a mold and being able to have that fit without any hand work. We've talked about it before, you and I. I talk about it all the time on this channel, but even you and I doing a couple of interviews, we've already breached that subject. And I think it's important to bring up again, which is the ability to do more on a single machine. Absolutely. As you've just discussed, being able to say, here's my component. I'm gonna knock out all these materials, all of these parts, all of these operations, multiple tools, because ultimately a large portion of us realize how much money can potentially be lost by switching from machine to machine 100%. and doing more and knowing that you're an expert in so many different fields. I, I know how many machines you've been a part of personally, Keith, and your reputation precedes you as being a leader in that industry. So these types of messages coming from you are important to the audience watching as well, because you are that leader. You are that guide stone that allows us to do more in our factories. And we look to you for that. Uh, well, thank you. I look at 5-axis as one of the technology jumps. When we can incorporate 5-axis into a shop for the first time, we see one 5-axis machine taking out about four vertical machines and the capability, especially if you have the right work with the amount of setups. So when you can add automation, that ratio goes up to about seven to eight to one. So when you think of the throughput that you could experience in a shop floor with 5-axis, and picking up those additional operations with automation, it's game changing. And Keith, if I may, since we're on the subject and we're buddies today, how much floor space did we just save as well? Oh, it's I huge. mean, are you kidding me? Four machines to one machine? Uh, how many people are fighting for real estate? Absolutely. That's one of our uh, battle cries within customers. We look at their shop and we hear companies say, hey, we have to move into a new building. I think that's the wrong mindset. I think we've got to really reevaluate what we've got going on the floor pick a few strategic machines and be able to do more with less and use your team of manpower to be able to increase those sales without moving into a new building. Well, the last thing I'm going to ask you today, Keith, and I think this is important. When I start my machine shop, will you help me as well? Oh, absolutely, Tony. We're in together. <laughs> I like it. And this is the expert that will help guide any machine shop out there. Keith, thank you so much. Uh, thank That's you, how I know I'm going to have a successful machine shop. Yeah, thank you, Tony. And I got you on camera saying it. You hear that guy? I got him on camera now saying it. <laughs>